Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi everyone, today we are going to discuss about uh, separable Hilbert spaces, the projection theorem and the Reese representation theorem. Let us quickly recall that uh, a matrix space X with matrix D is said to be separable if it has a countable dense subset. For example, if you take X to be a complex field over uh, F equal to C, then this is a vector space. Q plus IQ is a countable dense subset of C, here Q is set of all rational numbers. Our main aim is to discuss separability in a inner product space. That's why we are looking at examples of uh, inner product spaces which are separable. Let us take x to be c power n uh, over the field c. Then here also we can conclude that q plus iq whole power n is a countable dense subset of c. Hence we can conclude that uh, x equal to c power n is also a separable inner product space. Now let us look at uh, x to be c a b where uh, CAB denotes here the set of all continuous functions taking values in R. If you take f1 g from x then f inner product f g uh, is given by integral a to b f x uh, g x bar d x. So by the Weierstrass approximation theorem we know that the polynomials are dense in CAB with respect to the supremum now. now uh, if you look at polynomials with rational coefficients, then that is a, a countable subset of CAB and in fact that is also dense. Hence we can conclude that CAB is separable with respect to the supremum norm. But we want to establish that uh, CAB with respect to the L2 norm is also separable. Now we have the following relation that the relation between the L2 norm and supremum, supremum norm is given by this. So L2 norm of f is less than or equal to square root of b minus a multiplied by supremum norm of f. So if uh, we are able to approximate uh, f by a sequence of polynomials in supremum norm, we can do the same uh, with respect to the L2 norm. Hence we can conclude that uh, the inner product space CAB with respect to the L2 inner product is also separable. Now we can ask the question. Uh, what are all the separable Hilbert spaces? The answer is given by the following result that uh, if you have a separable Hilbert, if you have a Hilbert space H, then it is separable if and only if it has a countable or the normal basis. So here the proof can be uh, given in a uh, uh, proof can be uh, given by using the gram schmidt orthogonalization process. So let us start with uh, uh, assuming that H is separable. That means it has a countable dense subset let us say it to be xn then we can extract a linear independent set yn from uh, the sequence xn such that their spans are same once we have the linear independent set by using the gram schmidt process we can conclude that using the gram schmidt process we can get a northern normal set e1 e2 so on such that their span is uh, span of e1 e2 so on equal to span of y1 y2 so on so span closure of y1 y2 so on equal to span closure of e1 e2 so on that equal to h so we get a countable orthonormal basis uh, using uh, gram schmidt orthonormal orthonormal process now on the other hand if you have a countable orthonormal basis for h we can actually look at uh, uh, finite linear combinations of ENs where the coefficients are of the form uh, coefficients are elements from Q plus IQ then that, that forms a countable set and span of that new set and span of ENs are same 
so then we can conclude that we can we can get a countable dense subset out of uh, countable or the normal basis so next we can ask the question what are all the separable hilbert spaces so we know that uh, r power n and c power n they are all uh, separable hilbert spaces now when dimension of h is finite can we characterize all uh, separable hilbert spaces so in fact uh, we can show that when dimension of h is n we can conclude that there is a 1 1 on 2 isometry from h to r power n or h to c power n depending on the field so the proof is uh, given as follows suppose h is n dimensional uh, hilbert space it has a orthogonal basis consisting of e1 e2 so on en define a map t from uh, h to c power n by x going to x is map to inner part x with e1 inner part x with e2 so on inner part x with en so this is an element in c power n and on the other hand if you have a, a element in c power n let us say lambda 1 lambda 2 so on you can write x as lambda j vj j equal to 1 to a this is an element in h so that becomes uh, on to now we can also show that norm tx square here l2 norm this is nothing but summation j equal to 1 to n modulus square of inner part x with ej so by the parsevals identity we can conclude that this equal to norm x square so this is a case when f equal to c when f is r we can do the same process to conclude that uh, h is isometrically isomorphic with r power n now in the infinite dimensional setting uh, let us look at suppose h is uh, infinite dimensional separable hilbert space so it has a countable orthogonal basis say uh, e1 e2 e3 so on now we want to establish a one to one onto correspondence from h to l to n which is also an isometry now as in the earlier case you take element x in h and send it to uh, an element in l to as in, as in the following way here uh, first component is inner product x with e1 second one is inner product x with e2 the third one is inner product x with e3 so on now we can easily show that this is linear map and norm tx square equal to summation j equal to 1 to infinity now modulus square of inner product x with ej and by the parsevals identity we can conclude that uh, this is norm dx square equal to norm x square so this is l2 norm uh, so this says that t is a isometry we can also show that t is on to to show it is on to let us take a sequence and look at vectors like this lambda k ek and show that let us look at nth partial se some sequence of the series show that this is uh, convergent if and only mod lambda summation mod lambda k square k equal to 1 to n is convergent so we have to define x as summation j equal to 1 to infinity lambda k ek we can show that x is an element of h so that establishes onto onto ness of the map t so that means uh, there is a one to one onto correspondence which is also isometry which preserves the inner product uh, between these two spaces hence uh, there is no difference between h and l to n so whatever uh, we have what we proved is that in if h is a finite dimensional separable hilbert space so that is isometrically isomorphic with uh, f power n where f is the field and n is the dimension of h and when uh, the hilbert space is infinite dimensional then we have shown that it is isometrically isomorphic with l to n that means these are the only uh, separable hilbert spaces if there is any other separable hilbert space that can be identified with uh, these spaces one of these spaces okay now the question i would like to ask is the following
give an example of okay non separable hilbert space so here the int is that in a separable hilbert space every orthonormal set is countable so with this we can construct example of non separable hilbert spaces okay next we discuss about the projection theorem which is also one of the important results in functional analysis let us quickly recall uh, the parallelogram law in an inner product space x with this inner product we have norm x plus y square plus norm x minus y whole square equals 2 times norm x square plus norm y square this is one of the important results in uh, geometric Hilbert spaces now using this result we can actually show that in a Hilbert space H if we have a closed convex set C we can say that given any point x in H there exists a nearest, nearest point uh, from the closed convex set C let C be a closed convex set in a Hilbert space H then for any x in h there exists a unique c in c such that the distance between x and c is nothing but distance between x and capital c that is nothing but infimum of norm x minus c c in c and in fact such a element is unique So it says that if you have a convex set, suppose let us take this to be Hilbert space R2. Now we have a convex set like this. So So this is the convex set. Now we are taking a point x outside. It says that there exists a point which is nearest to this x. That point is C. And the distance between x and C is exactly the distance between x and capital C. Okay. Now if you drop the convexity or closeness of the set C, we cannot get this result. We can actually see examples where we can get infinitely many uh, such C's. For example, you take circle, let us say this X from the Hilbert space and this is C. This is not convex. If you take the distance between X and any point on the boundary of C, so they have the same distance. That means we can get x with this property, uh, c with this property, but that is not unique. This is c1, c2, c3, so you can get infinite many points which are near to x. Such a point c, whatever we got here is called nearest point to x. And in fact, we can get examples uh, if you drop the condition that c is uh, convex, we can get examples where such a c does not exist. Okay. Now using this result, so here the whole idea is to use the parallelogram law uh, in a different way. So this can uh, directly prove using parallelogram law. 
we can skip the proof of this result now using this result we can uh, as an application we can show that if m is a closed source space in Hilbert space H then we can conclude that orthogonal complement M is non-zero so given any closed source space in Hilbert space H then the orthogonal complement of M is non-zero and now using this we can actually show the projection theorem Here, yeah, to prove the earlier result, to show that orthogonal complement of M is non-zero, we have to as uh, we have to use this uh, nearest point theorem. So we have taken that C to be closed convex. Here, if you take any subspace that is always convex, now we are assuming that M is a closed uh, subspace and this is a closed convex set. We can apply the earlier result to uh, get this result. Okay, projection theorem says that if M is a closed subspace of a Hilbert space, H, then we can say that H can be decomposed as M direct sum with M perp. Here direct sum is nothing but orthogonal direct sum. So in the earlier result, we have to use the fact that M is a closed proper subspace. Because uh, we can take M to be H itself, then in that case H perp is 0. So we need to assume that M is proper. Now here coming to this projection theorem, is it says that we can decompose the given Hilbert space using a closed subspace in this way m plus orthogonal complement of m per that means whenever we take x in h so x can be written as u plus v where u is coming from m and v is coming from m per that means uh, u and v are orthogonal to each other and this can be written in a unique way now the advantage of this projection theorem uh, is the existence of uh, orthogonal projections in Hilbert space. So this is very important in the sense that it guarantees existence of an orthogonal projection. Okay, so let us take uh, define. Now x in h implies x equal to u plus v where u is coming from m and v is coming from m per define p a map from h to h by p of x as u where x is u plus v. Now we can easily show that this p is linear. and range of p is exactly m and the kernel kernel of p is m per so this is a projection onto m along m per so this can be visualized in r2 very easily so let us let us take this to be M and M perp will be so if I take any point x here x is u plus v so this can be written as uv also so this sends the projection sends this to u where u is an element of M so this is an orthogonal projection now using this uh, projection theorem we can get an orthogonal projection which is non-trivial 
and the, on the other hand uh, if we have orthogonal projection on hilbert space we can actually decompose the hilbert space using uh, range of the so if p from h to h is in orthogonal projection here projection means p square equal to p orthogonal means range of p is orthogonal to kernel of p in that case we can write h as kernel of p orthogonal at some uh, range of p in fact we can show that by projection theorem this is kernel p perp because whenever we have a bounded linear transform continuous linear transformation this is continuous so earlier case also we can show that this p is continuous then the for any continuous linear transformation the kernel is closed now we can apply the projection theorem to get this one so this is nothing but kernel of p direct sum and kernel of p and range of p are orthogonal to each other so we can say that range of p and p is a projection onto range of p so what exactly we have done is we have hilbert space here h and we have projections given any closed sub space we can get a projection whose range is m that means uh, there is a one to one correspondence between closed sub space of hilbert space and set of all projections in fact they are all continuous projections so in fact sometimes it is useful to discuss uh, properties of sub space using an operator or at map and the other way also okay so this is about the projection theorem next we discuss one more important result uh, called the ries representation theorem it says that how a functional on a hilbert space look like so let us start with a hilbert space and let us take uh, z is a vector in h so define f suffix z from h to c here the field is c we can take r also so fz at x is inner product of x with z for every x in h we can easily show that fz is linear continuous and norm of fz that is supreme of inner product x with z where x is coming from h with norm x equal to 1 so this is called the norm of the functional this is exactly we can show it to be norm z in fact uh, by cauchy squares inequality norm fz is less than norm fz at x is less than equal to norm x norm fz at x is less than or equal to norm x norm z so if you take the supremum over norm x equal to 1 this is less than or equal to norm z and when you take x to be z by norm z then we can actually uh, show that norm fz is exactly equal to uh, norm z okay so here uh, z is a non zero vector if z is a zero vector then automatically f sub z is a linear function zero functional okay so we can conclude that uh, given any z in h we can actually create a functional on h now the converse part is uh, we can ask that if you have a functional on h can we associate it with a 
vector. So this result is known as the Ridge representation theorem. Let f from h to b, h to c be a continuous linear functional then there exist a unique z in the h such that fx is nothing but inner product x with z for every x in h and not only that norm of this functional is exactly norm of z so in other words we can conclude that this functional f is uh, equal to f sub z that we have defined earlier so combining these two results we can say that all the functionals on a Hilbert space are this form they are given by inner product with particular vector and this particular vector z is called uh, Ridge representer for the functional f so, uh, in other words we have established a connection between h and the dual space of h so, dual space of h is nothing but set of all functionals f is linear and continuous so we can say that whenever h is a non-zero Hilbert space we can say, conclude from this that h star is also non-zero because given any z in h we can create a functional and vice versa given any functional on h we can create it so z going to f sub z in fact the norms are same so if i define a map from eta from h to h star so eta of z is fz then we can conclude that norm of eta z is norm fz that is z that means eta is an isometry In fact, uh, we can show that eta is eta z plus w as eta z plus eta w and eta alpha z in this case is alpha bar eta z whenever z and w are coming from h and alpha is coming from c. So this map, map is not linear, this is a conjugate linear map. Okay, so this is a uh, correspondence between H and H star, which is given by the Ridge representation theorem. And in fact, uh, we'll come back to this Ridge representation theorem when we discuss about adjoint of a linear uh, bounded linear transformation or continuous linear transformation at a later stage. So we'll stop here. Thank you very much.